do you want to get weird? Video games are usually applauded for their fun gameplay, compelling storylines and for letting you put buckets on the head of NPCs, but some games are known for making people question everything they know about everything. These games kind of push the limits of what we consider normal, throw all logic and reason down the drain and make you question why your eyes are doing you like this. And yet, despite how strange they are, we're here for them, as we are Freakazoids. None of these games were ever going to become household names, and they probably never wanted to be either. That's worth celebrating when some video games these days feel like they were machine generated by the Marvel subreddit. Cough, coughing sounds, coughing. To give credit to the weird and wonderful strangeness that this industry can sometimes provide, here are 10 games weirder than people who clap when the airplane lands. Why do they do that? Why? Let us know what strange games we missed and you could be in with a chance of winning a free Steam key. Don't mind if I do. Number one, Catherine. There is no better game to start this list off with than a game that probably couldn't get made today. From the creators of Persona, which itself is hardly the ham sandwich of video games, Catherine is a puzzle platforming game at its core, but it also tackles mature themes and bizarre storylines. The game follows a man named Vincent, who struggles with choosing between two girls with oddly similar names, his long-term girlfriend Catherine with a K, and a blonde girl he just met, Catherine with a C. Blatant adultery and unbelievable riz aside, it gets weirder. The game's main gameplay point is its platforming segments, wherein you'll find yourself climbing a tower every night in your nightmares. However, throughout the game there'll be several bosses that'll chase you up the tower as well. These bosses have eerie designs that will not only haunt you in the nightmare segments, but also in your real life dreams. There are plenty more twists and turns that make Catherine a weird cult hit, yet those fall under spoiler territory so you'll have to play the game yourself to find out. If you like seeing a goat dude in his underwear, you will love Catherine. 2. Cruelty Squad Cruelty Squad is yet another FPS game in a giant sea of them, but it's not your typical FPS game, in the same way that Catherine isn't your typical puzzle game. Consumer Soft Products' abstract chaos combines immersive sim elements from games like Deus Ex and Hitman, except this time it feels like the ultimate fever dream sprinkled with LSD. By looking at the graphics and art style alone, you already know you're in for a pretty drippy ride. Call of Duty wishes it could look half this interesting. Aside from its grotesque aesthetics, the game has plenty more oddities to offer. Yeah, Cruelty Squad is like Hitman since you're tasked to assassinate a target at each level, and you also possess severe levels of drip. However, this game has kind of gross mechanics like harvesting a dead enemy's organs after they explode everywhere. Does Battlefield let you beat up insurgents with the decapitated leg of your best friend? No. Exactly. Eventually, you can sell the harvested parts in the stock market for money, black market style. Not that I'd know, you know, how the actual black market works. <whistles> Cruelty Squad has a lot of unsettling, almost abrasive aspects, and it isn't really going to be for everyone, but those who do jive with its special brand of brain poison will find something truly weird and unique. Free Demolition Girl. Oh god, the monetization of this video is in danger. We're used to monsters like Godzilla, King Kong, or flash mobs wreaking havoc across cities, but what if that monster was a skyscraper sized bikini model? Luckily, you don't have to imagine because Demolition Girl gives us just that, as well as a little bit of shame. 
in Demolition Girl, an idol, the Japanese kind, not the Gareth Gates kind, sadly, named Riho Futaba, is doing photo shoots at the beach until she is bitten by a strange creature, making her gigantic. Put a nice echo on that. Gigantic. Confused about what happened, she roams around the city, causing mayhem, so it's our job to stop her. To do so, the game will make you pilot various vehicles, such as helicopters, tanks, and jet fighters. However, some of the game's objectives are pretty unusual, like making you fly around to take measurements of her body, or defending her from aliens. We, uh, we went to the moon once as a species. We went to the moon. It's rare to find another premise as weird as Demolition Girls, but that's why it's so memorable. If you played Resident Evil Village and it unlocked something deep, deep within you, at least you know now what you should play next. Number 4. Harvester Only initiates may enter the Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon. Did you... say something? While it's not the absolute weirdest, Harvester wins the prize for being the most disturbing game on this list. We really can't show you much of it, because if the giant swimsuit lady isn't going to give us that yellow icon, this big old map of weirdness will definitely have us crying to our mummy instead. Initially released in the 90s, Harvester explores dark and twisted concepts, including murder, cannibalism, and um, stuff that we really, again, cannot mention without our monetization status getting shot into the sun. Its use of gore is also unlike any other game we know today, making it seem so casual that it sends chills down your spine. The game was so f***ed up that it even got banned in Germany, which honestly is like a big old stamp of your game being pretty cool. If the US government thought the likes of Night Trap were bad in 1992, they might have just outright banned video games altogether if Harvester had came out around the same time. In Harvester, you wake up as Steve Mason in the small town of Harvest in 1953. Steve has no memory of his past, so he explores around and interacts with people, only to learn that the residents are acting strange and a deeper conspiracy is afoot. Point and click adventure games are usually pitched to people of all ages, but not Harvester, as this blend of FMV, absolute grot, and black comedy is certainly no Monkey Island. Number 5 Hylix It's hard to get your indie RPG to stand out these days, but Mason Lindroth managed to do just that with this big old slice of weird. Hylix calls itself a recreational program with light JRPG elements made with claymation. This distinct art style gives Hylix a surreal and bizarre vibe that feels like a mix of paranoia and retro futurism. If you like Aardman but wish sometimes the animators would take a lot of psychedelics, you're in the right place. The story itself is also abstract, as it's open to interpretation with its little dialogue and focus on visual storytelling. Additionally, Hylix's soundtrack is worth mentioning since many consider it raw and rough, and really just about a million miles away from the slick, sleek sounds of most modern blockbusters. The game also gave birth to a sequel, Hylix 2, which has more story and a new take on its gameplay that's arguably a more complete experience. If you plan on trying these games, prepare for a nonsensical and bizarro trip. Number 6. LSD Dream Emulator Of course, this list wouldn't be complete without LSD Dream Emulator, which has become absolute catnip for retro YouTubers over the last few years. Including us! As you can see it's in our PS1 Hidden Gems video, click click click, watch watch watch, click click click. LSD Dream Emulator is an original PlayStation exclusive where you explore surrealistic, dreamlike environments. The game has no real story since you only move around and touch objects until you get transported to a new dream scenario. The game is unsettling because you never know what horrific nightmare fuel you'll encounter next. LSD can throw you into various places, from natural environments to sumo rings to complete acid trip rooms. The worst thing is that the game is fully randomised, so you don't know what will come next. If that's not enough, the game will spawn unsettling creatures or suddenly play a video or message to mess with you. 
Fort Metal Gear Solid 2's final descent into madness was too basic? Hold on tight and bring plenty of chewing gum. LSD has several bizarro elements that can make anyone feel uneasy, haunting players even long after the playing game. While the game was never released outside of Japan, here's a clue to help you play this one. What's the third word in its name? Hmm? Number 7. Mr. Mosquito We're back in Japan and back wondering what's going on and why we feel like this. People who live in tropical countries know how annoying mosquitoes can be. Thankfully though, Mr. Mosquito allows you to experience what it's like to be on the other side as the blood-sucking critter instead. This game is exactly as it sounds. You play as a mosquito named Mr. Mosquito. Is his first name Mr? Kinda like Mr. Kennedy? And your job is to suck blood out of unsuspecting residents of the Yamada household. Despite its simple yet unconventional premise, the game has more aspects that add to its strangeness. For instance, the game can sometimes trigger battles where the residents spot Mr. Mosquito, so you'll have to calm the resident down by hitting specific spots, kind of like an armoured core game with an added chance of malaria. There are even levels where you have to drain the victim's blood when they're taking a bath, which definitely wouldn't happen in many of today's games. Still, Mr. Mosquito will always be known as one of the most unique games for the PlayStation 2. Quick little bit of trivia for you. Mr. Mosquito was developed by Zoom, who also made Phalanx, which has one of the weirdest slash worst slash best box arts of all time. What's he playing on that banjo? Let us know down below. Me, personally, bit of Sade. Yeah, playing a bit of Sade. Number 8. Path-O-Logic Any person who's played Pathologic knows it deserves a spot on this list. Any person who's also been on gaming YouTube for longer than about 15 minutes has probably also had at least two 10-hour video essays recommended to them. Pathologic is a psychological first-person survival game wherein you find yourself in a mysterious town infected with a deadly plague. Playing as one of three characters, your main objective is to keep the citizens healthy throughout 12 in-game days. Doesn't sound too wild so far, right? Well, take The Sims, mash it with Deus Ex and a big old dose of pessimistic inevitability and you have a game that sometimes feels angry at you for even playing it. Pathologic does a great job of making you feel exhausted and desperate with its strange atmosphere. You might even be forced to make tough decisions to survive, like stealing, looting or trading opiates for sewing needles and razor blades for small children. Good luck trying to use that at the big Asda. Pair that with its dated yet somehow still captivating gameplay, Pathologic is a unique and polarising experience that's not for the faint of heart or anyone who actually quite likes rats. This game will make you hate them. Number 9. Seaman, as in David, not the other thing. You grot. You grot. Everyone. Virtual pet games are supposedly cute and relaxing games where you can turn off your brain and chill with virtual furry friends. Think of Nintendogs for instance and you immediately forget about taxes and the heat death of the universe. Oh. However, Seaman on the Dreamcast took this formula to a disturbing level. Instead of a usual talking cats or Tamagotchi eyes, Seaman has you care for a fish-like creature with a human face. If Sonic Adventure had the right idea with the chows, Sega wanted to make sure freaks were still catered to here. There's more to it. You can talk to the Seaman using the Dreamcast microphone, and it'll actually respond with some of the strangest dialogue ever put in a video game. Well then, I guess you are just very comfortable with seeing your naked body in all those positions. Oh, wait, maybe you haven't seen that video yet. It's even possible to have multiple Seaman and watch them slowly evolve. But make sure not to forget them so that they don't die. Imagine not having these gormless faces watching you, constantly judging you almost endlessly. Doesn't really bear thinking about, does it? 
To top it all off, the game's narrator is voiced by the late, great Leonard Nimoy, so at least you'll be accompanied by him throughout this cursed, cursed game. Number 10, Xeno Clash. <laughs> Just by taking one look at its gameplay, you already know Xenoclash was made exclusively under the influence of Chief Wiggum's Chili. Xenoclash is a first-person beat-em-up which is already pretty weird set in a punk fantasy world named Xenozoic, which sounds specifically like a weird quiz show parody in Tim Robinson. The game does have a story, but it's hard to focus on it with all the bizarre enemies and settings you're thrown into, or without having elevated levels of certain substances within your bloodstream. You play as a dude called Gat, which is a little unfortunate. Xenoclash has a variety of enemies for you to turn into punching bags, ranging from insane corwids to odd shadow beings. Along with its impactful soundtrack and surreal art style, you can't help but feel uncomfortable yet completely hooked at the same time while playing through this one. Xenoclash might be considered weird by many, but it's definitely the good kind of weird. If you want something a bit more modern, Clash Artifacts of Chaos is a third person prequel that came out in 2023 and is every bit as weird and wonderful. And that was our video going over some of the weirdest games ever made. Have you been sufficiently mind freaked? Be sure to let us know down below and thank you for watching.